In your garden, believe it or not, a relentless survival game is being waged underground. A fungus, initially harmless, transforms its nature to become a cunning worm hunter. In more extreme cases, when the need becomes unbearable, from any organism, no matter what it is. Arthrobotrys oligospora is a fungus that feeds on decomposing organic matter. It is found virtually worldwide, mainly in yards or gardens, where it obtains most of its food. However, since 1980, biologists have noticed that, under specific conditions, this fungus adopts a predatory behavior, lurking and consuming worms. But this isn't the main issue that has sparked the interest and concern of scientists. The enigma surrounding this transformation has been the subject of constant exploration by researchers. Recently, a team led by molecular biologist Hien Che Wan of the Academia Sinica in Taipei, along with American scientists, has unraveled the most curious strategies employed by this fungus to hunt and devour its prey. They referred to a record from the 90s that had no reasonable explanation from the scientific community and remained lost in typical neighborhood myths. These studies found that when nitrogen and other components are scarce in the soil, Arthrobotrys oligospora employs specific resources and an unstoppable extension system to survive at all costs. According to the authors, different species of fungi develop various capture mechanisms, such as adhesive networks or constricting rings. In this particular case, its predatory behavior is activated when it detects the nearby presence of worms, and in case certain components are dramatically scarce, it searches in plants, animals, even inanimate objects. The genetic pathway that allows the fungus, in simple terms, to smell the pheromones of its prey was already identified. However, the new research focuses on what happens after detection. He and Che Wan and his team detail how the fungus increases DNA replication and ribosome production, preparing for the hunt. The next stage would be trap construction. A new class of proteins on the surface of these traps was identified, called trap-enriched proteins, crucial for trap adhesion to any nearby organism. To assess their effects, scientists manipulated the fungi to deactivate the proteins. In these cases, only 10% of the nematodes placed in the traps were captured after 10 minutes, in contrast to the 100% capture rate observed in intact traps during the experiment. Another crucial protein in this process is syntaxin, which facilitates the transport of worm adhesive, a kind of natural glue that makes the trap extremely sticky, restricting the prey's movement. Moreover, when the fungus detects the danger of starvation, an unlimited explosion of this protein occurs within itself, causing its nutrient-capturing networks to extend to unimaginable sizes. In the experiment, the removal of this protein allowed 70% of the nematodes to escape from the mutant traps, unlike the observed behavior in wild-type fungi, where almost none escaped. The mechanism of action seems simple, but it appears to be the only organism that seems to feed in a way where the only thing that seems to matter is survival, not how to continue subsisting. Once the prey is captured, the fungus penetrates the worm's body and decomposes it through filaments called hyphae, which internally absorb nutrients for distribution. During this stage, an increase in the activity of genes encoding protease enzymes was observed, essential for digestion. These are equivalent to those produced in the human stomach, pancreas, and small intestine. Upon this discovery, scientists began to analyze in depth a series of highly intriguing cases recorded in the 80s. Some residents of California reported finding strange creatures attached to their cars, which grew uncontrollably day by day, despite their efforts to peel them off, 
clean, and even tried to spray them with pesticides every evening. Apparently, according to later studies, it was a case of Arthrobotrys oligospora in action, seeking nutrients beyond the normal worm diet. When soil tests were conducted, it was noticed that the earth lacked certain minerals and basic foods for worms and other creatures that, according to the food chain, had this fungus as their predator. On the other hand, despite being forcibly removed from the exteriors of cars, they had impregnated the interior metal structures, taking refuge there to proceed to cover the entire surface and finally devour the entire vehicle. The problem in these cases was that once the fungi increased in size, due to the enormous weight of having consumed tons of material in a short time, their own mass prevented them from moving or extending their hyphae to the rest of the garage or neighboring houses. In this way, seeing their feeding impossible, they simply perished after a few days. I had never seen anything so disgusting. Here in the neighborhood, you know, everything is very clean, there's actually little vegetation, and you rarely see any dust. But that week when I saw the white stain on my car, it was horrendous. At first, I thought it had been stained with paint, or one of my kids had spilled something on the trunk. It came off very easily with water, but in a few days, it grew more and more, even dirtying part of the floor. I don't know how to describe it well, it was similar to cold glue, like when it dries and leaves a whitish, almost transparent, pulsating network. And, of course, after a week, I had to call pest control, who ended up burning that tremendous creature that had completely swallowed my car. It looked like a giant slug, with many gelatinous limbs that seemed to move independently, going in different directions. I noticed they were trying to reach the ceiling but couldn't. I don't know what fungus may have infected my garage, but someone has to be responsible, and I'm going to sue, for sure. To date, no more cases of this nature have been reported, as they were likely very fortuitous cases where the land may have been infested and sterile for years. However, research carried out since 2015 has revealed that due to climate change, some northern hemisphere lands, due to increasingly intense heat waves, recorded their lowest historical nitrogen concentrations in the gardens of highly urbanized areas. This poses an imminent risk in the future, where these fungi could start proliferating uncontrollably in areas with high population and urban density. This would mean a completely uncontrolled chain reaction. <laughs>